It is said that change brings opportunities. And only when you have a mindset to embrace change can you truly recognize it. As part of the Embracing Change series, I sat down for a chat with a friend of mine who not just had a mindset, but also had a courage and grabbed the opportunity of a lifetime. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Vinita Gera. I work for Dent Technologies and I'm happy to be here with Aparna. Welcome back, Vinita. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're a big lady now with a huge position and all. Uh, but for those who you who didn't know, Vinita and I go way back. She was part of my channel before as a guest. Uh, she and I have done a series on mindfulness, three different areas of mindfulness. It's That was one of our favorite topics. From then to now, Vinita, your growth has been phenomenal. So the last time we met, you were planning your life in a certain way, right? And uh, then came this golden opportunity, which absolutely disrupted your life. So what was your initial reaction to this change? Thanks, Aparna. And first, thanks for inviting me again to your channel. It's always, always fun to do something with you. Uh, and yes, I remember our conversation that time very clearly. Uh, I also remember how I felt then. So the change that was happening then was that my manager was leaving. Uh, I was his successor. And my role was becoming much bigger. Uh, my role was changing now to include the responsibility for the Bangalore and Pune centers, with Bangalore being the much bigger center. And I lived here in Pune. So when my boss told me he's leaving and I'm his uh, next, uh, my first reaction was that his shoes are very big to fill and it'll be hard. Uh, the next was home is in Pune. So mm. how will this work out? And, and, you know, all the possible concerns around it. And I thought I won't even get this job. Uh, and, and I told him that. I thought I won't get the job because of my location. But he was not at all worried about that. He said very calmly, that's a non-issue. And he just said, be here every week in Bangalore. Uh, most importantly, wow. I was very, very excited. Because, you know, because I would be leading a large center of excellence. I hadn't done something like this uh, in my career so far. So I truly felt that I was in the right place at the right time when I got this role elevation. So my initial reaction was a great mix of excitement, the fear of failure, and anxiety. I think it was a deadly cocktail <laughs> over there. But if I were to pick the strongest emotion amongst these, it was excitement. Indeed. And I want you to stay on on this particular feeling for just a little bit because it's such a fascinating journey. And I want you to recollect the time when you got this news and the feeling that you had. Were you like proud of yourself? Because I know that you have put in a hard, lot of hard work uh, and now suddenly the universe seems to be giving it back to you. Did you get this kind of feeling? I absolutely got that. I don't have it so much today. I think it's it's like a step, right? When when you haven't yeah. climbed the step, you feel, oh, great, right? And that's what the feeling proud, excitement, this is a step I haven't gone to. But once you climb it, it feels, so, you know, when you ask me this question today, uh, I, I would look at myself and say, you know, I don't know why I was so excited, but I was. At that point of time, very, very happy with myself. And like I said, I was at the right place at the right time. I think I... I attributed a lot of it to luck. People do say that this is never only luck, you know, it's a lot more things. I agree. It's, you know, if I was just there at the right point of time and if people thought I wasn't capable, I wouldn't have got that right, job. Right, right. So I did get it because of my capability. But the chances of me being there, this person leaving, all of that coming together, right? Uh, I think that part is and that's important because for that reason alone i wouldn't have ever said no right or mm. i didn't take it as any trivial challenge i took it as a good challenge because i think i was incredibly lucky to be there at that point of time you mentioned that you had to travel every week and that obviously has a huge impact on our lifestyle right so how did you adapt to such a shift and uh, what is the most painful thing that you had to deal with it wasn't exactly painful, but it did feel like a set of challenges, right? There was this mm -hmm. part of the job where I can do it, not do it, can I fill in um, the shoes of a person who's got a larger than life image, right? The, he's truly, mm -hmm. um, uh, the person who was leaving was truly a legend. So there was that part of the work. And then there was the logistics of being in Bangalore uh, every week. Uh, so, so there were these two buckets. 
So I did have to make some adjustments, right? I mean, uh, I had to figure out the logistics. It was, it was, it was more about just operationalizing it like any other process. Uh, I I joke about how operational my Bangalore travels had become. Like I packed only in the morning for a you know six a.m. flight also, which was because it took me only ten minutes to pack. Uh, and and pe- I know that most people you know spend a lot of time on packing. I uh, absolutely used all my time in the flight and the uh, cabs uh, because of you know the uh, distance between the airport and any place in Bangalore. I absolutely used all of that. I even took naps if I needed in between. So somewhere I had trained my body to. I remember, in fact, I remember a very uh, funny instance. I'd downloaded a lot of this music that let me fall asleep at any point of time because I had to do a lot of sleep catch up. Also, you can't mm. reach office in the morning because you've traveled in empty sleep. You need that energy. So I had just operationalized the travel part of it. Uh, on the family front it was good timing because we had just entered the empty nesters phase and uh, it was very easy it it actually wasn't difficult uh, it did mean not meeting my partner at least four days a week or five mm-hmm. days a week sometimes and eating dinner separately and so on and over there i think again it was a discussion it was like hey this is how it's going to be and he was equally as excited about it so once you're equally excited and committed towards a shared goal like my goal had become his goal because several times in his life his goal was my goal and then it didn't matter to him that he's ordering in food he never i don't remember a single instance of him complaining about you know our separate dinners our separate lives or on literally three or four days a week in fact on the contrary when we were together we made the most out of it even more even better than the previous time so personally i think the travel part of it to me it was always it was just easy it it was something i didn't let myself complain about it but around me people complained a lot about it they said how are you doing it get an apartment move here and all of that right because the back and forth sometimes from an external perspective can look tiring and look at god yeah. tiring on some days but to me this was do it without complaining don't complain about it because it's a very tempting path to go down saying oh i'm tired oh i have to do this nobody forced you to do it you have to do it because you got it and that made it easy so you mentioned earlier you are not as excited as you were on the day you got this news are you happy with the decision though? absolutely absolutely very very happy that i'm more happy about the spirit in which i did it right mm-hmm. and um, at any point of time now if i am doing a discussion within my company for a different role or any such thing which needs me to be in bangalore there is zero fear over it right because i've already done it so yeah. it, it doesn't matter to me so i've overcome something that for many years i thought i can only be hired in a pune job market so that whole thing uh, went away uh, i i i don't remember planning out my attitude while before doing it it happened in the process i think the reason one of the reasons why the attitude was right and why i was so um uh, positive about this whole travel situation is because being in the bangalore office was super high energy so the role brought in so much energy and so much happiness that that disseminated the any any other doctors that would have come in if i wouldn't enjoy my work i think it would be different so it finally boils down to you know whether you're liking what you're doing or not is it worth the efforts you're taking that shifts your mood towards doing it right so i'd like to make a point here that uh, most of us who embrace change in in the true spirit usually end up being happy with that decision but majority of us struggle to take the decision itself initially right so the what kind of a message do you want to give to people who are watching you today so the fear of failure is something that is common among a lot of us and you mentioned that uh, as well right um other than the fact that you had to work on the structure you worked on the process of adapting to the entire uh, you know change of lifestyle etc if there was one thing that you could summarize and a message that you can give to people who are listening to you today what would that be my overall advice for whenever it comes to a change not just this change that happened with me and with all the changes up and now you've spoken so much about these things you're so evolved in it and you've gone through so many changes yourself 
I think the first thing that happens is, you know, our own self-talk of, hey, this fear of failure or this resistance, will this change be harmonious for me? Will this go well with me? And, you know, all of those things are coming in. So, so here's how I do it. If my self-talk is, yeah, there's a fear, there's a resistance to change, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure, but I'm excited, but I want this, then I go for it. If there's nothing, if there's no excitement, I don't want to go for it, and I have a fear, and I have a resistance to change, I don't think it's worth pursuing also. But in this part, once there is something in it for you, then go for it. And how to eliminate that resistance or the self-talk that happens in your head the way I do it is simply, what's my plan B? Okay, and people often, again, this is very contrary to popular belief, saying don't have a plan B because then you will take your door B. No, mm. I think I need to tell myself what's the worst thing, right? So if in this case, if it didn't work out, I give it two years and I leave. Is that really bad? Absolutely not bad. I still did it for two years, right? So every time knowing your plan B or what's the worst rather than plan B, I'll say, what's the worst that can happen? Do you have an exit route if this is absolutely something you didn't want to go ahead? That brings me comfort because I know I can take that anytime. Well, Vinita, thank you so much for your time and those wonderful words of wisdom vis-a-vis -vis your story. And your stories are always beautiful. We get to learn from your experience and you had such a fantastic experience. So I'm looking forward to hearing more such stories from you in near future whenever there is possibility and time. And of course, preferably we will do face to face and not via Zoom. Well, that's it from both of us. If you have any questions, comments or feedback for us, do leave it in the comment section below and or reach out to me in any of the social media platforms that are flashing on the screen. Thank you so very much for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, share it with a friend who needs to hear such stories to embrace change. And of course, I'll see you next week with another topic. Until then, 